Hi, my name's Willy. I'm going to be looking back at each class in vanilla and answering a very simple question. Was it any good though? Today, we have the mage. Here's the points I'm going to be looking at. The leveling experience, how good they were at it and how fast they could level. The class quests, what were they for and how well they fit. PvE, dungeon and raid performance. PvP, open world or battlegrounds. And tier sets, the effects they had as well as the looks. The Mage, the Spellcaster, part of the holy trinity of characters you'll find in any RPG. Along with the Warrior and the Stealthy character, you'll be able to find a guy that waves his hands around and something cool happens. Fire, Frost and Lightning, uh, Arcane, Lightning's that guy over there. Mages brought the pain from a distance and they did it well. As with any other class, the early levels are rough, and they're meant to be. You are a new adventure in a massive world after all. Imagine if creating a new character and instantly being able to steamroll everything. Leveling becomes a unique experience for the mage as they grow in levels, as they can do something no other class can. Reliably AoE farm mobs solo. Between Frost Nova, a level 10, Blizzard at level 20, combined with the improved Blizzard talent, and eventually Cone of Cold. Mages can easily keep massive hordes of enemies at arm's reach and gradually AoE them down. Supplemented by their free water and food supply after each pull, the mage is very capable of staying cool and in control. This unique ability extends way past leveling too. At 60 it can be used to efficiently farm gold or perhaps even world drops. Being able to level via AoE isn't likely to be a thing on classic release unless you're quite far ahead of the crowd due to the number of people in each zone, but it is something to keep in mind. Both Arcane and Fire aren't really used for leveling as keeping enemies away from you as a mage is very important due to your low armor and health pool. Also, most enemies are melee based and if they can't reach you, they can't knock back your spell cast, which is just another reason why Frost is the go-to spec for leveling. Finally, one of the best things about leveling on the mage is being able to teleport to major cities. This gives you so much more flexibility with where you set your hearthstone and will help a lot as many quests in classic just love to send you to places that are miles apart. The mage class quests have a nice progression to them, gradually creating different powerful items as you experience with the class grows. You go from an apprentice at level 10, to an adept at 26, to a mage at 30. Beyond that, there are several more quests including two at later levels, one for Polymorph Pig and the other to get the final rank of Conjure Water. The higher level mage quests often have a reward themed around one of their elements too, which makes it feel as though you're not just growing as a mage, but as a frost mage or a fire mage, which is something I really like. Though the mage quests might not have the epicness that other classes get, they are a really good benchmark for what quests can be for a class and show character progression done right. So far so good for the mage, and it's only going to get better. Mages are PvE powerhouses. In dungeons, their wide arsenal of AoE abilities, slows, and polymorph make them a valuable asset to any group. Let's not forget Counterspell interrupted for an insane 10 seconds then. You'll also likely be providing others with water for the run too, saving everyone a bit of money. Raid-wise, mages started off fairly strong in Molten Core and ended up absolute monsters in Naxxramas. There is no point where mages are bad in raids. Mages brought some extremely important utility in Molten Core and Black Green Lair too, with their ability to de-curse. Mages were essentially locked into playing Frost for Molten Core and Black Green Lair, since many enemies had very high fire resist because they were made out of fire. And they were much better than just a decurse bot though. Their damage was one of the top for ranged, and you can't forget they brought a valuable buff for the entire raid as well, as making entire rivers of water for the other mana users. Ross mages would tend to run a 31-0-20 build. Chatter could not effectively be used in group play, as the freeze effect would either not apply or instantly break from other players' damage. Also, many of the later talents in the frost tree are defense-oriented. This allowed mages to spec deep into the arcane tree, making them very mana efficient through the combined effects of frost channeling, arcane concentration, and arcane meditation. Multiple mages would warrant one going deep into the frost tree to pick up the winter's chill talent, which would boost frost critical strike chance by 10% at max stacks for all mages. In AQ40, mages were able to unleash the fire spec, the age-old issue of needing crit somewhat being dodged by all the gear acquired from level cap, Zulgarub, and eventually AQ40, and it showed in raid. 
Dolgorub also provided many solid upgrade and hit chance item for casters across the board, making pretty much all casters stronger at that point in time, and this continued ahead on into Naxxramas. A Fire Mage spec would look something like this, key points being Ignite, Improved Scorch, and Getting Combustion. Master of the Elements and Arcane Meditation allowed for good mana efficiency once again. You could opt to drop Arcane Meditation in favour of Blast Wave to get some big AoE damage, and the whole spec was built around Ignite which tied to crits from all fire spells, making it scale so incredibly well. If you're looking for a ranged DPS for Classic, Mage will absolutely be a top tier choice. Well, if I haven't praised this class enough yet, we have PvP, where mages were also among the best. Some of the most well-known WoW players ever have been mages. You can just look back at Warcraft movies and see all the familiar names from over a decade ago. Playing solo, mages were only at a disadvantage from rogues that got the drop on you, as was every other class really, and hunters if they were good. And even then, mages had a good number of ways to outplay, and it was largely gear dependent as well. Once specs deep into the frost tree, cold snap, ice barrier and ice block gave the mage much needed survivability. Mages could reset fights with polymorph into big shatter combos with frostbolt and cone of cold, which would both proc shatter if used together, leading to many one shots on the lesser geared. In group PvP, they had options as well. Frost was generally still the leading spec as it held off the destructive force of warriors and rogues with its array of movement impairing effects and mobility. Mages also had the unforgettable Pom Pyro spec. This spec was designed to do one thing, delete someone from the game every 3 minutes. Presence of mind turned Pyroblast from a 6 second cast to instant, combined with the follow up from Fire Blast and Blast Wave and... That's a lot of damage! Once again, there's very little not to like here. Mages even had fantastic tier sets. Netherwind Regalia didn't just look great, but its 8 set meant that your arcane missiles, Frostbolt and Fireball had a 10% chance to proc Presence of Mind, and this would really add up over the duration of a fight, and was a really cool proc if you're able to hold it to take advantage of an instant pyroblast. The Frostfire set from Naxxramas was another set that looked great, and it's since been removed from the live game as have all the old Naxxramas sets, with the occasional piece appearing on the Black Market Auction House. You can expect to fork out a large amount of gold to get your hands on any of these nowadays. The actual set bonuses work together too, one providing an increase to damage and another a reduction to threat, which, come Nax, was as important as ever. So, the mage. Was it any good though? Mages were more than good, they were one of the best. Pick any area of the game and mages excel. If you want a ranged DPS for classic, mage is going to be one of the most popular choices, no doubt. Though, as with any class that's likely to be popular, you're going to be up against a lot of competition for tier gear, and bosses don't exactly drop a lot of gear either. Apart from this, the only downside to mages is that they're so good people often want to rent your abilities from you for a bit in the form of water, food or portals, though in the end it is a bit of extra easy money for you. Expect to see many frosty friends across Azeroth come launch. Let me know what you think, and as always, thank you for watching. Bye.